So I wouldn't really say it was doubt, but it definitely like showed me I needed to go harder. Because a lot of people ask me, oh, how do I get offers? How do I get offers? But I wanted offers at the time too. So like my name video, I was texting coaches. I'm reaching out to everybody. I'm emailing everybody. I'm texting them on Twitter DMs. Nobody texting me back. So mm -hmm. it was like, damn, like, am I, it's something I got to work on with myself. Yeah. So um, I got in the lab. I ended up betting on myself. I left Central after we just won state. I was starting as a true freshman yeah. at a corner. I left Cent, went to Kansas City, played receiver. And within that next year, I dropped 40 plus offers. So. Welcome back everybody to the Leaders Talk Podcast, where we talk to leaders in every industry, from athletes to CEOs, to everybody that you admire most. And we figure out how they got to where they are today. And today, I have two special guests. Four star, Western Carolina University, all American, the list goes on, wide receiver, and his dog, <laughs> Santana Fleming and so today, we're going to find out what type of leader he is, the things, the, tri the tribulations, the lessons that he learned, and ultimately the advice that he would share if he had to redo it again. So we have to start off with the most important question that you're ever going to be asked. You ready? Yeah. Coke or Pepsi? Uh, I don't really drink soda like that, so oh I'm going to probably gosh. say... It's uh, the same answer every time. Oh, like, I've yet, to get a, I've yet to get a real answer. Everybody says, I don't drink soda, I don't... What I, um, I think Coke. I'm going to probably go with... Coke too, like yeah. If I had to choose, I'm probably okay. going to Coke. People say usually Coke is for old heads. Nah, nah. Like I said, I don't drink soda, but if I'm remembering correctly, I think a lot of time I had Coke and Pepsi. Coke was better than me, but yeah. All right, choose. you're a go with the flow or make a plan. Um, both. It depends on what the situation is. Like, depend on how poor. Like, if we just want to go out, like let's say for terms, if we want to go out Saturday, like say it's a Saturday night, and we don't know what we want to get into. We'll just get in the car and we'll, wherever the car well, take us, that's what we're doing. <laughs> where the car yeah, takes us. That's where we go. go, where we go um, candy or chocolate? Um, I ain't gonna lie. Candy, yeah, candy. Yeah, I'm candy. I don't really chocolate. Like, I'm straight out of your chocolate from time to time. But. All right, so now that we got the most important questions out the way, we got to know a little bit more about you. I kind of want to start from the beginning. Right. Before football, before coming out the womb. Around like, oh, well, your middle school, your elementary, what did your parents leave on you? Like, what what did you really take from your parents' relationship with you? Um, Really that anything, I could do anything I put my mind to. As like, long as I believe it, then I'm going to make it happen. That's something that they uh, instilled in me since I was young, probably like four or five years old. So like I said, like, as long as I had the vision, I knew that I'd be able to complete it. Yeah. That's something that they always told me through the ups and downs, the goods and bad, like, no matter how life turned out, like I said, if it's in your mind, you can for sure make it happen. It's just, and what age, what, what was the age that you started like taking football serious that you were like, yeah, like, maybe I'm a little good at this? Truth be told, probably like 13, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't 13? Even like, yeah, I ain't even like football. I thought you were gonna say five or six nah, or something. so I started playing early. I started uh -huh. playing football when I was two going on three. And um, How do you play at two years old? Yeah, so I started early, so they, they ain't <laughs> How do you, you don't even walk at two years old? So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was playing at uh, the Kansas City Chiefs early, early. And like I said, it was something that uh, my old boy always wanted me to do growing up. So he like, he had mm -hmm. threw me out there early. And um, I, I want to say it was real hard on me. So at first, like, it was like, it was more like a, a business. Like, I was thrown into it fast. Yeah. But, um, probably around 12, 13 was when I really like started picking up the game and yeah. realizing I could, I could go somewhere with it. So yeah, 13 was probably was yeah. the age I started taking it serious. Like, we could yeah. really make it out, what I got going on. Yeah, no, it's funny because you say the, because um, I had like the same relationship with my dad, like he was super hard on me. And I, yeah. I feel like it's like one of those tough love things that they're like, like you don't understand why they're being so hard on you, but they kind of like see where you could be if you kept yeah. going along the line. But at the time, I didn't understand. That's, that's what I'm saying. Was young. But it's like yeah. a blessing in the sky. So when you look back on it, like you're pissed off in the moment, like, yeah. like pissed off, like you're, oh, I don't want this, I don't want this. Yeah. whatever. And then eventually over time goes, you're like, you know what, damn, like, they had some type of influence on me. Like, if that wasn't the case, then I would have been who I am today. But. Yeah, like, a lot of people don't know. I quit football at a certain point in time. When I was eight going on nine, I had to take a year off because I was like, it's just too much. Like, how did that How did that play out? Um, So that's why I was saying I really got good at 12, 13. So when I took the year off from uh, 8U, yeah, I was on 8U and I quit. Mm -hmm. Coming back 9U, I was the man 7U. So when I stopped 8U, um, I came back 9U. I was in a slump year. I ain't really play like that. But I was on a real good team, a real good team. So I was on the bench. My 10th grade, I was on the bench. But towards the end of the season, I had a coach that believed in me. Shout out Coach Jock. So um, I had a 10th grade year, you were on the bench. 
No, oh, no, not 10th grade. 10 oh, 10 years old. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was about to say, we fast yeah. forward a little bit. So, boom. So, yeah, 10 years yeah, I was on the bench. Uh -huh. I had a coach that believed in me. So, towards the end of that, I started um, coming out my shell, and then the rest was history. So, like I said, as I got older, my game progressed, and I got better. Kind of like having someone, you, you had someone believing you. And that yeah, kinda and that's like, all I needed. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was it. And like I said, I just kept getting better and better. And then 13 the years. The rest is? Yeah, it was history. And got then, me. what was the age that you... Or it was around that age that you're like, damn, I'm good at this. And you started like, when you started taking it serious for yourself, because I know that was like, up until that point, it was like your parents and the people that believed in you that, hey, you know, keep going. But when was it like, you were like, all right, bro, like, I'm going to start like working out. I'm going to start going to the park. I'm going to start training myself. Like, when was that um, age? Yeah, probably, probably eighth grade, yeah. Because I, uh, I had got my first division one offer in eighth grade, like eighth grade summer. So mm -hmm. before I was even like in high school practice, when I first got my offer, I was like, whoa, like if a college coach believed in me, yeah. Then I know I could do it if he believed in me as a 14 year old. Yeah. I've yet to touch and it hit you. It hit you. It was like, damn. Yeah. So so I called my people. They was excited. I was excited, and just to see like that joy around everybody in my family, I was like, uh, yeah. It's it was definitely. like a, a drug, like in a way. You're yeah, like, you like something. the joy. You like the feeling that you got from it. Like yeah. your hard work finally paid off. And then the people that supported you were happy too. So yeah, like, it turned me up. I ain't gonna lie to you. It turned me up. Getting ready to go to the high school. So yeah. Okay. So kind of fast forwarding, you just graduated Western. Okay. I mean, that's where you ended your career. Mm -hmm. You had an interesting post that I was like, like it hit me when it when you posted your your picture of your profile and you're like three years ago, like I'd have no, I had three offers. I was like no coaches talking to me, yeah. and then now it's like, and it's cool because you see the comments like dozens of offers, four star. What was your mindset in that like time frame between that post of like being a four star, having all these offers from that waiting period of like no coaches talking to you, like, was there a doubt? And how did you approach um, that? So I wouldn't really say it was doubt, but it definitely like showed me I needed to go harder because it was my freshman year and I was one of them kids. And a lot of people asked me, oh, how do I get offers? How do I get offers? But I wanted offers at the time too. So like my ninth grade year, I was texting coaches. I'm reaching out to everybody. I'm emailing everybody. I'm texting them on Twitter DMs. Nobody texting me back. So mm. it was like, and I'm like, am I, it's something I got to work on with myself. Yeah. So um, I got in the lab. I ended up betting on myself. I left Central after we just won state. I was starting as a true freshman yeah. at a corner. I left Cent, went to Kansas City, played receiver. And within that next year, I dropped 40 plus offers. So, and I just wanted to let everybody know, like, you just got to believe in yourself. Like I said, you see the vision, you can make it happen. It's just about the work you put in. Like everything that you put in, that's what you're going to get out. You don't put in the work, you ain't going to get nothing up. So yeah. and I said, I just wanted everybody to see my story. What I went through, and then be able to show that it's the same thing y'all could do it too. It's just, I said, you really just got to put that work in. So I was just trying to relay and just show everybody that it's possible for sure. And just give some inspiration to the people. Yeah, that's real. No, that post was inspiration. I know when you posted yeah. that, you were like, damn. Yeah. Like, that's one of those things that you saw you posted and you're like. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was telling me, it was like, um, appreciate the inspiration. No, that was inspirational for real. Yeah. Like, you didn't even have to play football. It's just that, that, that thought of like, because, I mean, well, not a lot of people, but some people either drop, like, offers, like, one year, like, all the junior year, or they drop offers, like, early freshman year. It's not yeah. usual that they have, like, um, they drop three offers. Like, usually, if they drop three offers, like, they continue to drop offers. But you, like, yeah. dropped offers, and then you, like, like stopped. And it was, like, it, it, for other people, it may have been, like, yo, like, am I good enough for this? Like, yeah. you would have just quit, but it's cool to see, like, that you kept going and... Obviously. Yeah, I really just trying to let people know, like, one good year could change your life. Like, no matter what situation, is, like you said, not even outside football. Like, yeah. one good situation, no matter if you down, bad, if you, you, you broke or whatever the case is, you put your mind to it. Oh, I want to be a millionaire. You find a plan, you stick to it, you're bound to go up in life. So, yeah. like I said, it, it was bigger than football. And I know a lot of people would text me saying, like, I don't even play football. And, you know, I still took yeah. it as inspiration. So Yeah, it's definitely inspirational. Yeah, yeah. So I took that around with it. So kind of outside of football, who's Santana Fleming? Like, um, type of person I mean? I'm a real cool guy. Like when I say I walk into a room and I light it up like easily. Um, I'm the type of person that a lot of people gravitate towards because like I said, I'm, I'm a real genuine person. I don't do too much in my personality. Like I could walk in the room and easily like check whoever up. Like just of having a simple conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what else? What else? Who am I? Like I said, I'm a I'm a real cool guy, feel me? I know how to, I know how to, I cannot word it. I said, I'm playful all at the right moments though. Like, if that makes sense. That's like, good, like, you know? <laughs> Nobody yeah, wants to be like, like with the like, serious person all the time. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, I like to have fun too. 
So I'm a real goofy kid. I'm not a boring person. Like you said, I'm not just all football, football, yeah. football. But at the same time, like that do make me a big part of who I am. Yeah. And like I said, I want to be um, inspirational to a lot of people. So I want to yeah. I want to leave this earth knowing like I was able to have an impact outside of football. Mm-hmm. So that's, and what, what ways do you think you're, obviously continuing on with football will be inspirational in itself, but how do you think you're, you're gonna differentiate yourself and actually like hit people's heart with your story? Um, so I plan on keep doing the podcast. Like I appreciate y'all having me on. And like I said, just telling well, people- thank my, you for the time coming no problem, on. So. No problem. And um, a lot of things, I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes too, and I don't really like, I be feeding the homeless. I try to do that at least yeah. like once a year. Like just giving back. Like if I'm driving around and I see somebody, for me, I get them bread. Yeah. This not on the third. Hope it's going to a good cause. Like I said, even when I be out the parking lot, like I be working out. People come up to me, they chop it up. I like ever on my social media when they be texting me. This not on the third. How can I get to where you at? This not on the third. I try to. I try my best to get them as much knowledge as I got. That got me where I'm at, so they could get that too. Yeah. yeah. Cause like I said, I want everybody to win. I feel like it's enough money I have for everybody. Like, of course. You ain't gotta be hating on. Hundred percent. That's, I think the um, the whole point that um the whole so far we're gonna get build uncover more of this story, but dusting off like you know have you guys ever went to like a like one of those museum type of things where you have a fossil in sand and you gotta like brush it off? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think so. When I was a shorty. That's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to like yeah. brush off the story that way everybody can get the full picture. Yeah. But um, so after you started dropping those offers. Did you lose some of the hunger? Like, what, what what changed in your mind? Or was it still like, okay, like, I still have to prove something? Because, I mean, you had the offers. You had the stars, like. Yeah. So, truth be told, the biggest thing is, for anybody out there listening, <clears throat> I'll probably say it's like, a, like you said, maintaining that hunger. Because there's going to be a lot of distractions out here, especially like once you get the stars, you start getting the offers. Like, everybody working to be that guy. And once you're able to be that guy, it's like the spotlight, you got to be mentally strong for it. Because you know it's going to be a lot of people telling me, oh, man, you this. You so raw, this and that, and the third. You know how the girls come at you. You know how the media come at you. Interview this and that in the third. Like you gotta, you gotta remember that this ain't the main goal. Oh, I'm a four star. I'm a all American. This and that in the third. Like I'm trying to feed my family. I'm trying to yeah. get paid millions. So yeah, like I said, it's, yeah. that's probably the biggest thing uh, to not get complacent and remember like what you're doing for for the main goal, not the not oh, the yeah, girls. I'm a four star. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not, not the girls. Not the girls in your ass saying, oh, oh, you so this, you so that. This and that in the third. Like they only they only messing with you because you up. So like you gotta keep going up, keep maintaining. And then, yeah, but like I said, no, nah, I didn't really lose any of that that hunger. Like I was still working behind the scenes, working behind the scenes. I said, I'm. You just gotta remain level headed with everything that's going on around you. Like I said, as soon as you, just like how fast you got it, you could lose it too. Yeah. So you gotta stay on top of your game because there's a lot of people working behind closed doors. And that one your spot too. In yeah. anything, in business or well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You anything, business, athletics, like people are coming for your head, and people are really. I'm sure your coach tells you that all the time. Like they're coming for your yeah. head, especially when you about to go to college right now. People are definitely coming for your head. That's what I'm saying. It's competition. Like that's that's how the game built. It's built like competition. Yeah. So like every day you gotta wake up with a goal to get better, yeah. wanting to get better because it'd be a, a walk on in college, end up taking your spot just because he's working yeah. harder than you. He's standing at the meetings, he working, getting in the playbook, like all that stuff matter. So yeah. Yeah, my people and start letting me young, so that's why I, I move the way I move when I am the way I am. So kind of continuing, I want to point out that you weren't like the tallest, the strongest yeah. wide receiver. Did that ever have like um like an effect on you that you're like, damn, like I'm not as tall as those other guys. I'm not like six two. I'm not this. I'm not that. And how did you kind of play with that? Or that was never a thought in your head. I ain't gonna lie. That was never like, if anything, like I said, that's Because there's a lot of people, true. like, I, to, like honestly, there's a lot yeah. of people that'll say, like, yo, like, I'm really short. Like, they're still good and they still got skills, but yeah. they, like, in their mind, they believe that they're short and they're not gonna be able to, like. Yeah, so I ain't gonna like, a lot of, like, kids that look up to me, like, younger ages and all, they ask me that all the time, like, oh, if I'm 5'8, 150 pounds, will I be able to. I feel like it's football. Like, as long as you got that dog mentality, like, it's all about, like, what's in here. Rather than how you built and all that, like yeah. you said, I'm 5'10", 160 pounds, and I done beat a lot of six foot plus DBs, six one DBs. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a dog, so nah, that ain't never really um, affect me. I said, I know the work I'm putting in. I know I want it more than a man across from me. So like, I'm gonna show them that every time I yeah. step on the field. Like I, I need this. Y'all don't. Yeah. Y'all don't need this. How I need it. Like I, yeah. I know. Like this is my plan A. Like this how, I'm, yeah. this how I'm gonna provide for me and my people. So. Do you believe in plan B? 
No, nah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, she started laughing. Like, I ain't really, like, when I promise you, like, my teachers and all that, like, oh, you need a plan B, this not this plan A. Like, I gotta, I gotta make it work. However it unfold through the ups and downs, the obstacles, like, I'm gonna keep going until I, yeah, I, I get my goal. Cause I feel like, and I always seen the post on Instagram too, like, oh, if you, Got a plan B that me don't believe in plan That's A. Like, I, you know? I always I always see yeah. that. And or actually a lot of people say like people that used to come to like on career day or something, they would always be like, or teachers even. Yeah. They're like telling you, hey, make sure like you have a plan B just in case you're plan A. Yeah. And I don't know why I've never, ever, ever been able to get that through my head. Cause I'm like, hold up, if you like putting time into plan B, you're That's taking not I'm only taking are you taking time, time from a. plan A, but it's like, hold up, you don't even fully believe. You're not like fully, you're like you're like, you're like Kind of in. You're like in, but you're exactly. like, fuck it. If it like but doesn't I, go, let me like step out really quick. Yeah, it's like, not nah, like, uh, if it goes down, it goes down type of thing. Like if it fails, it fails. But at least I know like I gave it my awesome. Yeah, that's that's good saying. that you're saying that you don't have that uh, but, plan B. But for, yeah, I wanted to touch back on the, um, the other yeah. thing about being a smaller receiver, a smaller player, period. So like I said, um, people ask me all the time, like, oh, if I'm 5'5", five, five, 120 pounds, do you think? I said, I feel like um, it's really all about being a dog. Like I said, this game is football. It's built like competition. It's not built on who the biggest person is, who the strongest person is, yeah. especially with me playing receiver. So I said, I take that into account. And whoever underestimated me off because of the size probably ended up They're gonna doing have to it see too. They're going to have to see you. So it's like, um, like I said, I feel like as long as everybody go out there with that mentality, like no matter if I'm 5'6", if I'm 5'5", five, five, I step out on the field, I feel like I'm that boy. Yeah. It's gonna carry over, so yeah. it's uh, it's ninety percent mental, ten percent physical. I always yeah. talk that. So every time I step on the field, I walk on the field like man, I'm not a boy. Like you gotta see me, and yeah. you gotta see me. Like what it is. And I think that's that definitely is gonna touch some people because, like you said, like there's already people hitting you up that like yeah, that are yeah. on their size or I get, whatever I get it may be. So much, so for much. real. Like that's actually something that you get like. Man, when I say like every time I do the little questions thing on Instagram, they probably text me like, at least twenty times like. Different person, yeah. different person. If I'm a smaller receiver, how can I yeah. do this and that in the third? I just feel like you got to have something else that other people don't got. Like, see me, I know I'm not 6'3", 200 pounds, but I'm fast, I'm strong, I'm quick, I'm all like I know how to. Yeah. Like, yeah, I use everything that God blessed me with to the max, yeah. to the best and Sticking of my to your competitive advantage, there was, oh, let me not get too off track, but kind of going along the line, then you made your commitment to Western Carolina. Yeah. I think this, I, I don't know if you've been asked this question, but I have to be one of the first ones to ask it. Okay. I think you know what it's going to be. I think so. Why did he choose? And I'm not saying it, I'm saying it like this. Nah, I'm going to say it flat out because there's so many people with your skill and with your offers that would have been like, yo, like easily could have been like, I'll go to Alabama, I'll go to Miami, I'll For go sure. to whatever school. And you like, I think it speaks more, 100% more. Because I think, and I want you to elaborate on the vision on why you chose it. Maybe you believed in like where they're going and what you want to build with that. All right. But ultimately, why did you choose that school? So um, I ended up at Western Carolina. Um, when I when I had got my official office, I had official office from uh, Mississippi State, Auburn, Louisville. Every school, State, like literally yeah. every school. <laughs> so um, so officially, I was ended up, I was going to take the Mississippi State route, but a lot of people don't. I had a coach that had died of a heart attack. Like literally two weeks before the Their coach died of a heart attack? He had a heart attack and, and passed away. Oh, so um, so that like, it made me have to take a step back for things. So um, mm -hmm. like I said, it was probably two weeks before signing date. Now I'm, I'm scrambling, trying to pick a school. Um, mm -hmm. Auburn was the fallback plan. We actually have a, a booster that's at Auburn now. He graduated from Western, so he told us mm -hmm. like, man, man, like, we're going to make sure you straight. This not in the third. And the receiver coach came down to see me. He mm -hmm. like, uh, you the number two down the board. Like, we want you, we need you. Yeah. They fire their coaches, so they fire they they head coach, they receiver coach, so everybody yeah. gone. So my top two schools, the whole offensive staff gone. Yeah. So it was like, um, I felt like Western Carolina was the best move for me moving forward. And like that's another thing. I be a lot of people be going to certain schools for the image, for the yeah. media. Like, oh, I'm at a big school, but yeah. you don't want to be one of them people. Like, it's a lot of politics in football, so I ain't want to be. Yeah, that's really true. That, that's real that you say that. That that go to a school and then we never hear about them again. Yeah. Like, but yeah, I chose Western Carolina because of the OC. He a real genuine dude, Coach K. Bell. Like I believe in what he got going yeah. on in the offense. Um, he always had a freshman All-American come down from Dade County, Broward County. They got a, a running back up there now. What's my name? Desmond. Desmond Reed. He a freshman All-American, and he the man. So I feel like I could go in there and be the next 
Like, they churning out a lot yeah. of fresh miles American talent. Yeah. And then I'm going to go up there and play with a quarterback I already got chemistry with, mm-hmm. Tiger, from uh, the West. So me and He's him, up there? Yeah, yeah. So he just committed that, too. So, yeah, like I said, we got talent okay. coming in. I don't know. Yeah, I believe in what they got. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got we to gotta, <laughs> hold on. We gotta take that back. How is that chemistry going to work? Where, where was yeah. the chemistry in Central and Northwestern? So uh, I played with him 13 years when we played for the Washington Park Bucks, and we won states, nationals. Like, any team we played, we beat them by at least 24. Like, it was nobody messing with us that year. Yeah. So um, I said the chemistry of my quarterback was going to be amazing. And they got a lot of South Florida guys up there that I already got chemistry with. So like, there's no beef from Central and Northwestern. Nah, nah, nah. Like, yeah, it's okay. on the field, it's but off the field, we cool. And you guys so, played uh, at SFE together. Yeah, huh? we played at oh, SFE. So yeah, together. you never. Oh, okay, so I'm never mind. I'm Scratch I'm Very say. familiar with the quarterback. Yeah, the system good. It's, a, it's allowing me to run every route tree, every yeah. route that's in a route tree to show up to uh, NFL scouts. So it's like, yeah. um, it's a good situation. Like I said, you got to do it for you. You can't do it for the media. Like a lot of people asking yeah. that question. Oh, why Western Carolina? Why Western Carolina? Like, yeah. I got a plan, I got a vision. So yeah. I said, I'm going to be able to go in, make plays. And then as far as NIL is concerned, too, I was the highest recruit to ever commit there. So like once I get the ball in on the field, it's not in the third, I know. Start making NIL, a name for yourself. Yeah, start. The NIL deal is going to come through yeah. you know, with the following and all that. And my agent, I'm going to let him take care of all that. So, yeah. But yeah, as far as why I chose Western Carolina, it was because I really believe in the, um, the OC. When we mm-hmm. talked about he really, he a ball guy. He had really yeah. sit down with yeah. you and talk football and everything and make sense. I'm gonna be able to run every route in the route tree mm-hmm. and show NFL scouts like we could do it. We played Arkansas week one. Week Arkansas. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a big game. Yeah, you know I'm saying, yeah, we, we play big competition too. I know people look at it like, oh, it's, it's FCS, it's not a third. We play big competition. Nah, so. it's a big school. Yeah, so. And then the rest, of the, the rest of the roster, I'm assuming, is very yeah, competitive. Yeah, yeah so. But that's real. I think, I think the, um, you did it. I think you saved a little bit of the plan and the vision to actually bring it to life. Like yeah. personally, me, I don't like talking everything about my plan. Saying, "Yo, like this is what I'm trying to do." The podcast is where, like, like I like letting, like, letting it speak for itself. So I think yeah. over time, we letting it play out is gonna speak for itself. But yeah. kind of reflecting back on your life, what's an experience deeper than football? It doesn't have to be football, off and on the field, whatever it may be. Some like type of experience that you went through, like a hardship, that I gave you like a hard life lesson. That you kind of like carry you with? Um, I'd probably say my 11th grade, yeah. Like, I would say, I was just talking about how everybody wanted to be the guy, everybody wanted to have the spotlight. So, 10th grade, yeah, was when I gained, like, was when the spotlight started getting on me. And then, uh, 11th grade, yeah, I had transferred to Heritage. And our quarterback had broke his leg. He broke his ankle probably like week one, week two. Mm-hmm. So, the rest of the year, I'm having uh, my homeboy, Brandon Ennis, he throwing me the ball. And that's a receiver. He just signed to Ohio yeah. State, so I'm having a receiver throw me the ball. And, um, it just wasn't really working out to us. We just kept handing the ball off, kept handing the ball off because we asking a lot from yeah. a, a receiver. Yeah. Go to quarterback and try to throw the ball. So um, I said probably every game, other teams, Tana, why they not throwing you the ball? Why they not throwing you the ball? I'm like, man, I don't know, man, man. So it's like um, slowly but surely, like the spotlight kept going down and down and everybody kept at, like, oh, what happened to Santa? Tana Fleming, this and that and yeah. the third. Like, they not even really trying to understand the situation. Like, I got yeah. a receiver throwing me the ball. They yeah. not hearing that. Yeah. It's just like, if you the guy, they expect you to be the guy all the time. So it was like, yeah. when that happened, I said, I had, a, I had a down year. It really showed me, like, who was, who was with you, who not. And that's why I tell a lot of people, like, you really got to be mentally strong. Because yeah. I ain't going to say I doubted myself a couple of times, but it definitely had me take a step back. Like, yeah. Like, and what was, uh, like, the big bold that you took from that? Um, I said, like, if you have to a, summarize it in, like a, like, a sentence, like, what did you take from that? Like they, like, they only love you when you up. So obviously, like, you really got to maintain yeah. and keep working. You got to keep that same hunger. Like, you still at the bottom. I said, no matter what the situation is, they not looking at it for that. If you not being what they expect you to be, you, they going to be, you going to be talked about. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, that's, that's just how that goes. So I tell people, like, you really got to be mentally strong. Like, yeah, everybody want to be the guy. But once you get that, you got to make sure your mind right. And I said, any love. Any little mistake, a tweet, this and on the third. Oh, he, you know you. With football, you already got people waiting to hate on you. So yeah. with any little thing, oh, oh, yeah. Sam, oh, he this, he that, he this and that on the third. And so, they're waiting on your weakest moment. They're yeah, like, they're I'm like saying. a little. Oh, I told saying? y'all he wasn't going. Exactly, yeah, like saying. they wait so, for that moment. Yeah, so I'll be saying like you just really got to be mentally strong with yeah. it. And then like I said, when you up, you got to take your losses the same way you take your wins. Feel me, head Yeah. Up. I said, ready to. Yeah. Get back to it. Actually, kind of transitioning. I think I know the answer, but for you to explain it, 
actually, to kind of wrap it up, I think we're seeing the type of leader that you are, the type of person that you became, the things that you overcame. And it's like molding into this person that no matter what people told you, no matter your height, no matter this, no matter that, you just kept true to yourself. And true to yourself was like, you know what? I'm going to work hard and I'm going to stick to the vision that I see. Yeah. And it's not as deeper than me. It's like for my family. It's a, it's a lot deeper than what the surface sees, the offers, the stars, all American, whatever it may be. But kind of to transition it to last two questions, what do you think? Do you think success is a straight road? No. no. And elaborate a little more. Because, right. uh, I mean, like, you got to understand, like, especially we get into the league, you know, it's, it's a 1% chance that I happen. But regardless, like, as far as success, period, out of football and football, like, you got to go through obstacles. Like, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Like, it's ups and downs, mm -hmm. adversity. Like, yeah, that's something that's it's, it's going to happen. So it's like, it all depends, like, on how you react off of it. Like, everybody going to go through something in life. Everybody, whether that's a lost family member, whether that's an injury in football, whether you lose your job, your house, whatever it is, it's adversity. Yeah. So it's like, that'll really show you what type of person you is, how you bounce back off of it. I said, as long as your mind right, you're mentally, you're in a mentally good state. I said, you, you able to come back off whatever happened, Mm -hmm. You would be straight, but nah, success for sure is not no straight road because that's the case. Everybody would be successful. Yeah. You're going to take losses. Yeah. I said, as long as you keep your head up, you're going to be straight. And then no matter through what, like yeah. I said, you just got to have faith in God, yeah. whatever you got going on. And like I said, you got to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Don't don't take two, three steps back and then just be like, no, nah, I'm straight. Like, you got to keep yeah. going. And I said, if you believe in it, make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's not even a light at that tunnel. Sometimes you gotta yeah. believe there's a light. You gotta like, throw, yeah, you gotta light a match and just throw it down there to like yeah, trick yourself. You and, like, make you know, your own light. Whatever, yeah. there's a light down there and just keep going. Right, but yeah. um, sure. definitely then transitioning to the last thing, I think to anybody watching out there to, doesn't even have to be football, to someone that's really like looking to get to the position of like their version of success and go overcome like whatever they're going through. What's your advice to somebody that that eighth grader out there that doesn't have offers and like they're trying to make a name for themselves, that person that just started their business, whoever is out there listening, like what's your advice to them on reaching their success? Probably really just keep going, like run your race. Like you can't never compare your success to another man's success, what they got going on. Like everybody got their own life, everybody going through their different situations. Like God might put it for them to run through their race and get through their goal quicker. And then you might have a bigger bag at the end of your at the end of your journey, this is not in the third. So I would always talk to like I never compare what I got going on to the next man. Yeah. I let them do them and I let me focus on me. Yeah. Cause I know like I said, I'm focusing on my craft and everything I got going on. I'm reach my goal. I can't be worried about the next man and oh them boys got this and that in the third, I gotta focus on me. I yeah. said through the ups and the downs, you just gotta keep focused, keep going and run your race. And I feel like at the end, like I said, everybody can be successful and it it really just all depends on you and where your mind at and what you got going on. And, and how you want to get to it, but like I said, you run your race and, and keep doing everything. You got faith in God, no matter what. I feel like um, you're gonna get everything that you desire, for real. Walk by faith, not by sight. Stay okay. true to your vision. That's the big bold that we're taking. But I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. I personally learned a lot. Like I, I, I didn't know a lot of things that you were saying. Like from you having chemistry with an a quarterback from yeah. Northwestern to you choosing WCU to the things that you overcame. But it was really interesting to see like your story, how you overcame things and what people can take from it. Yeah, but it. hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Anything you guys want to leave off on? Subscribe to my boy, man. For real, y'all boy. Leave a like, comment, all that. We're going up. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you so much for making it to the end and see you on the next one.